You all must have seen and used many color sensors before, but the DF Robot Smart Color Mark 4 electric sensor is going to blow your mind. You can use this sensor with 5 volt compatible controller boards like Arduino, and you can also safely use it with 3.3 volt compatible controller boards like ESP32, ESP8266, Raspberry Pi Pico, STM32, etc. And since it supports a wide input voltage range, you can even use this smart color sensor with PLCs. You don't need to do any complex programming. Using it is as simple as using a push button. All we need to do is read the high or low signal from the sensor. And based on that signal, we can perform various actions, activate a servo, count objects, turn on or off a specific load and much more. The possibilities with this sensor are endless. This may be a small sensor, but it comes packed with amazing features which you can access using the buttons provided on the sensor. How to use these buttons and their functions can be found on the sensor's official page. By entering the menu, you can adjust the light intensity selection, allowing you to choose between strong light and low light. You can also select the mode. There are three modes. C mode, Mark Contrast mode and C1 mode. You can choose any of these three modes based on your testing requirements. You can also switch between 1P and 2P under teaching selection. Additionally, you can select any delay mode of your choice. Feel free to explore the menu, change different options and test various modes. And if at any point you make a mistake or feel like you messed up the settings, simply press and hold the set and mode buttons for 3 seconds to restore the factory settings. This sensor is designed for high precision optical detection using a 4 element LED light source. With a sensing distance of 8 to 16 millimeters, it operates efficiently with a DC 12 to 24 volts power supply. The response time varies depending on the mode. 50 in mark mode for detecting light intensity and 130 in C or C1 modes for automatic color matching and brightness detection. This sensor supports configurable output selection, allowing users to switch between light on and dark on modes. Additionally, it includes a flexible delay function with a selectable timer range from 1 millisecond to 9,999 milliseconds, making it suitable for applications requiring precise timing. This sensor can handle high ambient luminance levels up to 30,000 lux under sunlight. It consumes a maximum of 300 milliwatts at 24 volts and operates within a temperature range of minus 10 degrees Celsius to 55 degrees Celsius. With an NPN output type, it integrates easily into various automation and control systems. It saves color data with one click which is pretty easy to use. The sensor provides stable detection of a variety of colors and its four-digit LED screen displays the real-time output color data. Besides, the color photoelectric sensor has protection mechanisms like short circuit protection, overload protection and polarity protection. Detection of picking machine with color mark. Detection of adhesive tape on metallic copper file. Detection of color printing mark on baking bag. Detection of the presence of sealant on metal parts. Detection of label color on the sprinkler. Detection of sorting label color on the assembly line. Detection of the color on the cup and so on. The sensor has a total of three wires. The brown and blue wires which are the sensor plus and sensor minus should be connected accordingly. Connect the brown wire to a voltage source from 12 volts to 24 volts and connect the blue wire to the ground. The black wire is the sensor signal output wire and you can connect it to any GPIO pin. I have connected the sensor's brown wire to 12 volts, the blue wire to ground and the signal output wire to GPIO 16 on the ESP32. I have already made a detailed video on this development board so if you want to build a similar development board, you can watch my previous video. I will add a link in the description below. Now let's start with a simple example. We will control the ESP32 onboard LED when the color sensor detects white the LED will turn on and when we remove the white color, the LED will turn off. For demonstration, I have mounted the color sensor on this mobile stand. The sensor's sensing distance should be within 8 to 16 millimeters. To detect white color, we first need to set it, which is very simple. Place the white colored object under the sensor. Press the set button. Remove the object and press the set button again. That's it. You can use the same technique to set any color. Next, slightly press the mode button and then use the up and down buttons to increase or decrease the value. Press the mode button again to select whether the output signal should be 0 or 1. These settings are enough for me. However, in your case, if you want to use the delay mode, you can go to the menu and activate any specific delay mode. Just go ahead and give it a try. As I mentioned earlier, if anything goes wrong, you can reset the sensor. 
This code reads a sensor signal on GPIO 16 and controls an LED on GPIO 5. If the sensor output is low, the LED turns on, otherwise it turns off. The loop continuously checks the sensor state and updates the LED accordingly. Now, let's make this project a bit more advanced. This time, along with controlling the LD, we will also implement counting. Let's imagine that this sensor is mounted on a conveyor belt and white cards are passing in front of it. We need to count these white cards. And let me tell you, white color is not compulsory. You can set any color you want. In the next example, we will also try using the blue color. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. This time, I have slightly modified the previous code. Now, we are not only turning the LD on or off, but also counting the detections. You can use this program for counting almost any type of object. I have already uploaded this program, and now let's do counting with the color sensor. In the third example, we are going to control this high torque servo. You need to connect the servo's red and brown wires to 5 volt and ground. Then connect the yellow wire to GPIO 17 on the SP32. When using a high torque servo, you must pay attention to the power supply because these servos require more current. On this development board, I have a 5 volt 3 amps power supply so I can run this servo without any issues. In your case, you can use an external 5 volt 3 amps power supply. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. The standard servo library does not support ESP32. Instead, you should use the ESP32 servo library, which is designed specifically for ESP32 based boards. Let me show you how to install this library. Copy the library name, then go to library manager and paste the library name. Make sure to install the ESP32 servo by Kevin. You can see I have already installed it. The color sensor is still connected to GPIO 16 and the servo motor is connected to GPIO 17. When the sensor detects an object, the servo moves to 90 degrees. When the object is no longer detected, the servo returns to 0 degrees. The previous sensor state is stored to detect transitions accurately. The detection events are also printed to the serial monitor for debugging purposes. The loop continuously monitors the sensor and updates the servo position accordingly. I have already uploaded this program and now let's watch the color sensor and servo in action. It's not that you can only use the white color, you can use any color you want. Just make sure that screen colors, light colors and liquid colors cannot be detected. Now, let's control the servo using this blue color keychain. For this, we first need to set the blue color just like we did with the white color. So, that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in the next episode and thanks for watching.